So we are now launching this program in New Mexico. You know, the three states that have this model currently are Colorado and Michigan and Connecticut. New Mexico is a very different environment, right? It's a different uh, climate and geography and demographics and what have you. And after that, we'll go to Arizona and then to Texas. And what we've seen as we've gotten out there and talked about this model is we now have requests from 20 different regions, states, what have you, all over the country without us even going out and, and marketing this. So, so this is just an example of one aspect of like, we're in a moment, like people want this, they want this in their communities, they want the ability to make these upgrades, but they need to be able to pay for them. It's so exciting. One thing I'm thinking about as you start the program is how, um, in some ways, it's great opportunity and so many opportunities and how overwhelming some of it is in terms of how all the pieces fit together for the programs. You know, cause there's like utility programs, there's state programs, there's different, different you know, private, there's all these pieces and um, having someone or entities that can kind of think about how those pieces fit together and complement each other rather than scrape and fight and cause, you know, it, it's just, it's just, um, it, it's, is really needed. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It is. And, and so there's a group of folks, you know, from the Green Bank world and the credit union and the community development CDFI world and the sort of nonprofits and advocates that are focused on capacity building too on the ground that are kind of doing a lot of intensive talking about how do we bring this all together? What are the pieces that we need? Um, how do we build that capacity on the ground for the folks that really you know, need help understanding what to do or, or building up contractor capacity, but then plugging them into standardized, productized financing approaches that can scale up. And that's not always going to be the case, right? You know, sometimes you need to have customized approaches, but, but they're just these rich, rich conversations that are of, you know, lots of different folks um, who are coming at this from different perspectives, who are coming together and thinking about, hey, this 27 billion greenhouse gas reduction fund that allows us to do not only financing, but grants and, and subsidies for capacity building and supporting communities on the ground. What are the strategies? How are we going to come together and, and apply for that money? So there's a lot of um, conversation going on. But as you say, there's so much to absorb. And so I think we all have to be kind of nimble and flexible and, and look for opportunities where we can get started. Some of this money is going to come through states. So we have to be paying attention to what states are thinking about and how they're thinking. And so for us, Part of the way we also think about this is this kind of matrix of these factors around where is there a lot of carbon intensity? Where is there a lot of energy burden? Where are there concentrations of disadvantaged communities? Hey, we need to focus there. Like that's where we're focusing our attention. And um, yeah, we want to get to the whole country. But I think it's really incumbent upon us to proactively, in thinking about the Justice 40 initiative, proactively focusing on those communities that have had historical redlining and that have deep inequality and in household wealth and company creation and what have you. Um, and that's, uh, you know, if we start there, we can we can get everywhere else. But that's that's another way to think about this, not just not just what sort of partnerships you're putting in place, but the actual geographies. And then who are your local partners? What do they need? And how can we adapt to what their needs? So it differs state by state, region by region. And, and I'm curious, does it differ um, based on politics? Do you find more opportunity in progressive commission areas or is it or the opposite? Or the opposite? Yeah. Yeah. So certainly like solar net metering policy, right? I mean, that's going to absolutely differ. But when I talked about our Smart E model in the 20 different parts of the country that have come to us proactively so many of the folks who are coming to us are cities, counties, regions that are in pretty deep red states, but they're on the front lines of the climate emergency and the energy burden emergency. They are seeing it and they're looking for solutions. And um, we have an opportunity to bring them solutions, even if their state doesn't have great solar policies. Hey, there's that 
$14,000, you know, rebate for electrification, right? We can bring that along. We may not be able to get to everything if the utility or public, you know, public utility commission doesn't have all the pieces yet, but we can start and we can have an impact and the desire is there in the communities. Kind of separated from the state house, you know, the, you know, what's going on at the at the state government level because everybody's feeling it. Everybody's living it. And I think that's what's you know exciting about the Inflation Reduction Act is that there are ways to help communities who want to engage that don't rely on um, solely political solutions. Right. And we're very focused on the IRA right now and trying to understand it. And it is federal government, which is so difficult to engage with. And so what I'm seeing with you is you have a product that simplifies things for the consumer. You're supporting the financial institutions that don't know about energy and are worried about the historically excluded communities and credit ratings and all that. And then you're the one, it seems, left sort of in- interacting with the tough stuff, which is how on earth do you get that government money? So I-, I know you know a lot about that and we can talk for probably hours. One question on my mind though is are you funded through the work? I mean, you're a nonprofit. Do you get to write yourself into the grants or do you have to go out and fundraise as well? In particular for the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund, maybe not other parts of the IRA, um, any one of the you know green banking type organizations or community development organizations that are doing you know the kind of work that we're doing should be able to draw out funds that will support our growth, um, as well as direct investment, you know, kind of the the operational capacity building we have to go through to scale up, right? This is true for many, many green banks and CDFIs and credit unions and, and intermediaries that are focused on this work. And the way in which that bill is written, that legislation is written, should support that. Now, we're, we're a small organization. Do we want to apply directly to the federal government I'd love somebody else to apply. Big 10 application, you know, a national sort of organization, or maybe they're a couple. And let's attach ourselves to those because I don't know that I want to be an applicant to the federal government. It comes with so many. I mean, coming out of the Connecticut Green Bank, where we worked with federal funds, we we'd had we had a front row seat for eight years of what it's like to to just deal with federal funds. It's There's a lot that goes with it. So these conversations, these kind of big tent planning conversations, a lot of that is around who's going to apply and how would the money flow and how can it support the intermediaries that need to scale up as well as the direct investment. IPC we think of ourselves as this kind of piece of, you know, this infrastructure that can be deployed throughout the country through lender partners, government partners, nonprofit on the ground partners. And so what we really think a lot about are what are the kind of standardized financing approaches for allowing a nonprofit to go solar or allowing an affordable multifamily property to get to decarbon, you know, electrify their their entire building um, and have EV charging and, you know, all the rest. Um, so we think about what are the what are the underwriting approaches that are needed? What are the standardized loan terms that are needed um, that will that will allow us to So the $27 billion from the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund is amazing, but it's nowhere near. It's like just a tip of the iceberg in terms of the investment we need to, you know, have in this country to deal with climate change. And so we think a lot about how we can standardize the financing product so that we can attract a lot more capital that needs standardization. But, but then kind of on the ground as we're deploying, how can we be as responsive to community needs? And so we're kind of doing this. And again, we focus on the underserved parts of the market, the harder to underwrite um, uh, projects. And so I, I, you know, I talked a lot about the Smarty program and that's homeowners, but we're thinking about this across sectors, taking these approaches and and applying technology too to make it easier to scale these sorts of things. And so 
this is this is hard work and there's you know we're just at the beginning of this work but these approaches are are really going to be what's necessary to to scale up across the country um and i'm really really excited about tech enabled solutions there's some really cool climate tech out there that allows us to like look at all the buildings in a community and identify which ones are the low hanging fruit for heat pumps right okay so now we take that and can we put other data against that to say which are going to have the easiest time with this type of product or that type of financing product right um so that we can just get a head start you still have to talk to building owners. You still have to engage with engineers and contractors. That's always going to be part of the work. But what can we do to get there faster, to get started faster? So that's another aspect that, um, you know, we're really excited about when we think about national scale solutions. One of the um, guests we've had on, on the show is our neighbor upstairs uh, here in Central Square, um, uh, Mike from Sense. And they, they make these uh, devices that basically you get a lot of information about what's going on in your house with electricity. Yeah, and yeah. That seems like an opportunity to, um, you know, identify um, failing heating equipment. There's an opportunity to, ahead of time or to understand um, exactly what's going on with the different um, HVAC and other electricity use in a, in, a, in a house. And by the way, to also report on like, you know, this is another big thing in, with the, with getting federal money. You have to report on what you actually did with it. But they also want to understand, like, did you actually reduce greenhouse gases, right? The reporting on this and the monitoring on this is – there's such exciting stuff going on that, you know, part of the climate tech. We, we've been a little more focused. I was not, – not, I don't think that's fair. We're really – we love the front end, like, help us identify, you know, help us help a community identify where to focus, um, and then, you know, kind of triage the, the top of the funnel, if you will, while also then thinking about how do we make make the process of getting that financing easier. And then in the back end, the measuring of like what's actually going on it's going to be an exciting time, right? To pull all these pieces together and the, the technology partnerships and the on the ground community partnerships and the financing partnerships and and then, you know, the other thing that we are really excited about is just, you know, getting more lenders engaged. Like, how can we help get more lenders engaged? And maybe that's our business model. It's not just our it's not just our capital being put to work, but we're helping other lenders get into this field. So most of the conversation, maybe every conversation I've had that touches on the things we've been talking about eventually comes around to this landlord tenant kind of issue. And I, I'm wondering, you're, you're so um, upbeat and can do, and I'm just, I'm just so excited. That, have you solved that? No, <laughs> or, or no, maybe better, no. What do you think? About okay. So, I mean, we think about like kind of this product roadmap of, you know, where can we make progress right now? Where, where can we create, you know, an ecosystem and a loan product and financing to, you know, make progress. There are a lot of hard problems, right? Landlord tenant when the property's not master metered, really hard. And we are kind of in the middle of unpacking how much of the Inflation Reduction Act is going to change that equation. So we we don't have the you know, we're looking at that, but it's unknown. Where we do see some progress or, or you know, kind of uh, more opportunity is States with community solar policy, that is one aspect, right? It's not going to get at what's going on in the building, but, but you know, maybe with these in added incentives, you can start to pull together solutions. So a lot of work to do there. Um, and we don't have the answers and like lots and lots of smart people working on it. And they're, you know, like we're at the table with lots of folks like really trying to figure that out. Um, I think housing authorities is an interesting place to intervene, you know, public, you know, municipal state housing, uh, finance authorities, housing authorities, because there are other mandates at work there. Right. That's not going to help for the private market, but that's one place to intervene. I'll give you another example where there's so much work to be done is the small investor owned two to four unit multifamily properties. These are predominantly naturally occurring. They have a range of owner types, a lot of challenges. How do you get at them? How do you structure the financing? How do you motivate them? Um, so there's, um, there's a lot of work still to do. There's a lot of work still to do. 
some standardized products or templates that work for that situation would be very welcome here in the Boston area. <laughs> oh yeah, Boston. yeah. You've got all the two, three. You know, yeah, yeah. The twos and three, and folks in Boston. You know, you've got great CDFIs in in your area and great you know policy environment. It's hard. I mean, it's hard just for regular upgrades, right? Um, and so, climate oriented upgrades kind of no different. Um, they tend to be the hardest to underwrite, but also the hardest to just find and motivate to take action. Um, I think accelerator models where you've got this or building energy exchange models where you've got this kind of intensive peer education, outreach, the resources for the technical assistance, the kind of case studies, you know, you're making heroes of the fir- folks who went first and you you try to kind of change community norms that is a super local activity, right? That has to happen, you know, in Boston, in Cambridge, in summer, you know, that, that, that's um, still, still a lot of work to do there. This has been really great. And I'm sure we'll need some follow-up at some point because a lot of the work that you're doing ties into what I do at Climable. We're always looking at you know, what are the financing options going to be for our communities doing clean energy microgrids, probably stuff at Synapse as well. And just all around very interesting. It's so great talking with you. Great talking with you, too. Appreciate the opportunity. Thanks. We'll hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.